made me reevaluate my life and where, where I want to be and I think it's brought people closer together. Well, so like I said, I had just moved here. Oh, of course, um, yes. So I didn't, I didn't know people here, um, and yeah, no, for the most part, it was a solitary, solitary experience. But what's interesting is that even though I'm spending more time in what looks like introverted time, right. I'm feeling more socially and relationally fulfilled. So I don't feel the need to leave the house to go to social places. So it's been an experience of just becoming more present to those relationships I am in, which actually takes up less time than being in a lot of distracted relationships. <laughs> right. Okay. Okay. So generally I would describe myself as, um, a glass half full type of a guy. And, um, that's easy to say when everything is going, um, your way or familiar. And I think, what the pandemic has, has caused me to do is reevaluate what's important. It's caused me to think again about why I've always done things the way I've always done them and how I can do them differently. Um, and it's also just brought out um, my sense of community spirit. Um, I, well, because Eddie was supposed to do his GCSEs and that was it, just nothing. So Yeah, no, yeah, I had George he, doing the same. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's is, it is so yeah. weird. I mean, that is that is the other thing, is that kind of arriving at uni here is that, because um, obviously I did my A-levels, yes. so I got my actual results, but, um, you know, loads of people, they were given, you know... Of course, yeah. I mean, in a lot of the cases, it was kind of their target grades and things. So, you know, um, they were saying, yeah, yeah, I'm on, you know, three A's or something. And I was like, oh. Okay. I, I have I have found that actually people cannot articulate or I've, I've struggled to articulate um, what they needed, what they wanted, um, and they and the, and the first thing they said was, "I know how busy the NHS is," um, but actually, um, I've been trying to encourage people to talk and speak up about you know what you know, just give me a call, whatever, just you know, what, it doesn't matter what you need. You know, just call me. I'm I'm I'm, I'm operating differently. I'm, I'm completely flexible compared to some elements of primary care, if you like. So mm -hmm. my message has been: doesn't matter what you need, doesn't matter what you want. Someone wants to pick a diary, picking up. I went out and got a diary, got her a diary, but she had no diary. She was panicking. She had to put her appointments in. So I went out and bought her a diary. You know, so it's. I think there has been that tension of not being able to articulate how you really, really feel because of. of the media and, and the, you know, the pressure on the NHS throughout the whole time has been a real challenge for everybody, I think. And I think we're seeing the back end of that now with people coming back, demanding to be seen almost now, you know, prior to the second lockdown, really kind of putting their foot down and demanding because they don't know how else to articulate it. The weirdest thing is um, when I arrived and met everyone, half of them have never been to a Weatherspoons. <laughs> And I was thinking, this is preposterous. I've, you know, <laughs> my whole year last year was basically going around different bars and things, you know. <laughs> so yeah. it was it was so weird getting to the state, because obviously they would have normally had kind of that summer period to, yeah. to yeah. you know, experience clubbing or, you know, go to a pub. Yeah. But um, so that, that was the weirdest thing, is that I felt kind of a lot older, even though I'd only taken a year. Like, <laughs>